We've got a video today on a Blue and Me fault, uh, characterised usually uh, by a flashing mileage. This video is going to go over how to get to the Blue and Me unit, uh, how we've diagnosed it, uh, and put in a new one back in. This is the, what the unit looks like. Uh, we've already had it sent off and coded. Uh, we'll go through everything in this video. So as I say, the Blue and Me unit is usually characterised by a flashing mileage on the cart. Uh, any electrical problems, that's probably what it's going to be. So how we go about testing that is we scan the car quickly. What we get is a code for a convergence telematic module. There it is, message missing. But there are a couple of different things that can cause that before we resort to ripping the module out. So we test the battery. Uh, we'll have a quick look at all the electricals going away from the battery, make sure that we can get some current out of it properly. Check the electrical system, so fuses. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, do one more uh, diagnostics and see where we go from there. So as I say, we've already done the, the first half of this job, which was taking the module out. Uh, the first thing we do is test the battery. So we noticed that battery wasn't good, but it also wasn't actually appropriate for this car. This car has a stop-start module. That's what that is there, connects to your earth. Uh, this is meant to be, for this case, an EFB battery. Had a regular flooded. Um, that does make a difference. A lot of people like to think it doesn't, but it does. They are designed for different things. And uh, any voltage problems can cause a, an issue on the system. So we, uh, we align that first, got that set right. So we've changed the battery, we try and do a clear, it doesn't work. Okay, then what else could be a problem? Well, we attack the earths next. So this is the earth lead, it's literally just pop that out, comes out and then right down there, if you follow the wire back, just down there beneath the earth, you see uh, there's a little bolt there. We've taken that out, we've scuffed that up, make sure it's good mating surface. Uh, this is the main earth coming away. And we also have a look, if I go back up, this is a stop start connector. We take that out, basically anything that can be stopping the battery from sending current through properly, uh, we have a look at. So while we've had the battery out, we've also had a quick look at the positive terminal as well. Got a little bit of lacquer on there. We've just scurfed it up. We want to make sure that as much energy can be transferred efficiently through the system as possible. Right, we changed the battery. We clear the codes. Still there. We've checked the earths. It's still there. What do we do? We move on to what else it could be. So we check the fuse box. Quick test. Uh, we checked fuse 51 and 36 people with, uh, if you do want to do it yourselves. Uh, they were fine. They're letting current through. We had a quick look at them. Uh, they weren't blown, they didn't even look particularly old, they were healthy, we haven't replaced them, uh, they're good. Okay, so we know it's not an electrical problem on the power end of things, battery's new, 100% works, fuses are good. Uh, that's when we properly have a look into this coding here, message missing. So that tells us that something isn't communicating with the convergence telematic mo uh, module, uh, and that is really, uh, well, that's your phone connect and stuff, and that is the blue and me. So we've diagnosed that it can't be the battery, can't be the fuses. Okay, uh, time to have a quick look at the module itself. So we wanna attack the uh, Blue and Me unit. It's not a job for the faint of heart though. This is where it lives. And uh, if you have a Fiat 500 and you have a look around, you can probably tell uh, within about 30 seconds that this is not a panel that comes out so easily. We've got loads of different bolts everywhere. The seat belt mounts through there. We've got bolts down here, but how do you get that out? This is in the way. Oh, there's stuff under the bench as well. So this is a bench out job, uh, trims popped. Uh, and then if you're a gross mechanic like me, a lot of cleaning afterwards. Um, but it is a job that we can do and uh, just take some time. Okay, um, so this isn't really a tutorial, but I will show how to get to the module, uh, how we do it, why we do it, etc., etc. We've already been over the diagnostics. Uh, so we'll start here. We're gonna attack the bench and the seats themselves. So. This bolt here, mirror on that side there. There's another one there. We've got some more behind and I'll walk around to the back of the car and show you that now. So in here, we've got two of those. These hold the, the center line in for these so that you can uh, drop one down and not the other. Uh, and then just here as well. One, two, mirror on the other side, three, four. I like to have the whole bench out. It gives me a lot of room to work with. Um, yeah, room, easier. If I'm not fighting the car, I'm happy. I said it wasn't a tutorial and uh, here I am telling you everything. This is a 16 mil for us, uh, probably the same for you. And that was just the, uh, was like there and there. We'll remember those ones and the two on the bottom side of the bench. And then for me, it was a six mil single hex bolt. And it just goes in like that. And that basically acts as a bracket to hold the whole lot down. Um, so there you go, not a tutorial. Except uh, I'll show you exactly how to do everything, I suppose, because why not? Okay, so we've got the bench out. Uh, we can have a full view of the panel. So remember, the blue and me is right behind here. 
Uh, it looks like you can take that out. Really annoyingly, you can't. That is one solid object. So now we're going to be looking around here. So for instance, this trim here, we're going to pop down a little bit. That where the seatbelt joins there, we're going to do that. Uh, we're just going to remove a bunch of different things uh, so we can get this trim out of the way. Uh, a lot of little bits of work, pretty annoying, but it is doable and it's really not too bad if you just put your head down. Okay, so very quickly what we've done next, uh, we've taken, this is the bottom bolt that holds the uh, seatbelt in. You just undo it, it's not going to come out. It's held in on its own. That just goes down there and that is a 13 mil hex socket. Easy. Uh, and then the next thing I've done is just these two Phillips screws there which means that we can pop that trim up makes it easier to do all this stuff this we're going to take out just goes in like that pops up like that that is an 18 millimeter hex now we're going to take that out so we can get to this trim uh, and again gain more access also going to do this Phillips here which I haven't done yet uh, and if you have something like a trim tool so like an orange lever now mine's orange maybe you've got a blue one uh, we're just going to use those kind of things to gently pop these trims out. We don't want to damage these. If you snap any of these trims, they're going to rattle like mad if you do get them to go, go back in properly. So, yep, slowly but surely, we're getting that. Okay, so we've removed this trim here. Uh, we just did the seat belt bolt. It's just two little poppers there. Again, use a nice plastic uh, tool to get this out. You don't want to damage the plastic coming out. It's just two poppers there for those holes there and there's a phillips underneath which i've already removed and then if we move back just here there's this uh, kind of plastic thing there beneath that going into this kind of stuff here is another phillips screwdriver and that's really all that holds this in mechanically other than again a couple plastic poppers you just want to gently pop that out comes out with relative ease but maybe that's just because i've been here before so we're going to move around again find more things we can undo to start pulling this out. But I'm eyeing up this light here, thinking about how I can take that out uh, and anything else around me. Maybe I wanna go from the bottom again and start taking off these trims. We're getting that. All right, it's getting a bit manic even for me between each cut, so much is going on that I'm struggling to keep track of it. Okay, let's start down here. Uh, this is the top trim, which I've just levered behind this. Uh, I've undone that Phillips screw there and that one down there, did that earlier. This comes up, you pull up, there's poppers on that uh, and there's a couple uh, go down the rail. We just want to get enough play to get that behind the one beneath it instead. This is the trim we're trying to take out. Uh, again, poppers and stuff. We've got some poppers running up the side here. I will show you, but the angle is pretty awkward. Uh, awkward. I might take a photo of it. Uh, and that's this side loose. So we move back. Like I said, I was eyeing up the light. Because we've already got this trim loose, I'm just going to let me show you. It's a wire back here that goes through this hole goes into this kind of light here. If you've already got it loose, you can just push this in, light comes out. And what I did was I used the Phillips screw to very gently, in the back here, you'll see, perhaps here, uh, there's a little tongue that will come from the cable. We just push that in, light will come out really easily. So now, if I'm correct, there's nothing else holding any of this trim in and this, will come out and we can access the blue and me unit. Now we're already putting our one back in, but I'll go over how you get the original one out uh, if you want to do that. Okay, so I was right. That was the last of the fastenings for it. Uh, I've just got it like that. I don't want to take the seatbelt out fully. Uh, this thing weighs probably in total a couple hundred grams. I don't mind it being like that. So I'm okay with that. Now, if you are going to do the blue and me module yourself, um, this is either going to be the easiest part of the job or the worst part. So there's these kind of holes here. One, two, and three. Uh, Fiat don't like thieves, understandably, so they've pop riveted uh, the module in. Um, if you're lucky, it'll come out easily. If you're me, it didn't. And I was here for about 10 minutes drilling into those rivets with increasingly larger bits until I managed to get them out. Uh, we're going to put it back in. As you can see, there's the connector going into the loom. We're going to pop rivet it back in and do all of this in reverse. Um, but yeah, that's where we are now. This is basically the end point of the job. And then uh, you do everything in reverse and uh, put it back together. I feel like at this point, as uh, I am about to whack the module back in the car, it's important to talk about this thing here. Uh, so for some versions of the Fiat 500 Blue and Me, they might need to be coded. 
uh, before being put in. The people we've sent this off to, we've had a quick run on it. They've uh, done the repairs for us and they've helpfully left this tag, no coding needed. So we can just plug this right into the Fiat in that loom over there, uh, do a proxy alignment after making sure we've got no error codes and it should work again. But if you are gonna do this yourself, um, I wouldn't even know how to go about finding out whether yours needs to be coded other than sending it off to a professional. So uh, maybe a bit of research, research on your end there. All right, just before I uh, fully box this lot up and do a quick alignment, just wanna show people that are gonna try to take it out themselves. This is the uh, connector for the, for the uh, Blue and Me module. And I really struggled getting this out because I tried to take the loom out first. Um, I think you'd be better off disconnecting the battery and uh, hitting those rivets out just so you've got some room to work with. But if you do want to do it the wiring side first, it's this black lip here, uh, not the cable tie, the thing behind it, uh, just a flat head or something, gently prise that up, it'll pop and unlock the loom. You just get it nice and uh, get it all the way back and that'll come out. I couldn't see what I was doing because I wanted to do the wire first. Uh, in hindsight, I should have done the rivets first. So if you are going to try and do that yourself, I'd say disconnect the battery, just take off the earth terminal. Uh, hit those rivets first, give yourself some room to work with, and then you can bring up the Blue and Me module, pop that tag out, uh, pull out the, the connector, and then, uh, yeah, ship it off to whoever you want to go to. So here we are, uh, we've done a quick, uh, put the module in, and just interesting to note is I'm about to try and do a proxy alignment, and just by plugging in that module, the mileage has stopped flashing. I'm still going to go through with the proxy alignment, make sure that everything is recognised, but that is a really good sign that this job has been a success. Um, it was a problem before. Fiat used the mileage flashing as a generally just a problem for electrical faults, but that is a already good sign. So if you're gonna try and do this at home yourself, um, I don't even know if you can do it at home yourself, maybe there's a software for it. Fiat 500, really easy. Just pull that back for it. And uh, we've got a OBD tool here. Goes into the OBD uh, two port right there. Plug it in, comes on. There we go. We're gonna quickly load up uh, the software, do a proxy alignment, and uh, if it was good, we're back in the game. Okay, so we've done the report. Uh, this is what we've come up with. Now these two are the, oh, we've opened up. Come back, where are you? There, these ones. These are the important ones. Uh, convergence telematic module missing message. They're stored codes now, not active. And we do have instrument panel cluster missing message, body control module missing message. Um, we're gonna try and clear those, see if they're clear, we're gonna do the proxy alignment. Uh, but this is actually really good. Uh, we're not really too bothered about the codes for uh, those codes for this job. It's those ones and this is good news. And also, if you are gonna do a scan on your car yourself, one thing to make note of is plugging the computers in, doing all the codes, especially on these Fiat's, uh, they take a while to load everything up. Just whack your car on charge. This thing isn't a brilliant charger, ancient but just something to stop the battery from dying with uh, mid scan is, is gonna help you out massively. All right, so the uh, all codes cleared. So we're gonna go through the body control module for the Fiat, do a proxy alignment procedure. Yeah, that's correct. Already correctly configured. So like I said, uh, for some of them, they come with the no coding required sticker. So it's good to double check, but that basically means that this was good to go as soon as I plugged it in and that's why the mileage stopped flashing immediately. So we know it works. I'm just gonna do a quick test run, connect my uh, phone to the car, make sure it all works. If it does, box it back up, and the job is done.